Dantrel. Treatment. By Joey Martin. Chris Jones, a 17-year-old high school student excelling in academics and is a phenomenal basketball player. He's focused on completing his final year of school, going to senior prom and leading his team to victory in the state basketball championship. But his life takes an unexpected turn when his mother, Fatima Jones, secures a new job and they relocate to a new city moving into a new home. In a Chicago suburban upscale neighborhood. Music is heard. We see Dantrell Washington sitting on a sofa in his basement recording studio. He's writing lyrics to a rap song for a secret mixtape that no one knows about, not even his closest friend and rap partner, Dub. As Dantrell writes, the music begins to slow down, he gets up from the sofa, in a trance, and starts to pace back and forth. He's writing like he's possessed and controlled by a spiritual entity. Suddenly, a woman's voice calls out to him, growing louder Dantrell. and more demanding until Dantrell snaps out of his trance. Looking up at the ceiling he goes upstairs to the kitchen where his mother, Linda Washington, is on the phone making arrangements for her trip to New York. Linda is a successful entertainment lawyer with high-profile clients and a dark past. When Linda was 16, she was raped, which led to her pregnancy with Dantrell. Her mother died before he was born, and her grandmother passed away on the same day Dantrell was born. Linda struggled and lived in different shelters until she meets an elderly native couple who takes care of Dantrell while she finished law school. Linda gets off her cell phone and tells Dantrell what to do while she's away. They pick up the luggage and walk outside of the beautiful mansion. She reminds him to activate the security alarm whenever he leaves the house. In a downtown Chicago law firm day, we enter a conference room in a sleek law office, where we see Fatima Jones dressed professional sitting at a glass table with a serene smile on her face. She's an attorney for an insurance company and today she's receiving an award for her outstanding work. She listens to the presidents of the firm. Mr. Douglas and Mr. Bauman share their appreciation. They give her a plaque and a bouquet of flowers, Fatima is genuinely appreciative. She says it's an honor to work for the firm, but she's making plans to move on. After work, Fatima is driving while talking to her friend, sharing the news. A woman's voice is heard coming from the car speakers. As they chat, Fatima other line rings. It's her son Chris. In a Chicago inner-city neighborhood. We see Chris Jones sitting on his front porch. His best friend and basketball teammate, Dion is seen bouncing a basketball. Marlon and Jason are standing around. Chris asks his mom to bring home some food, but she gives him a concise lecture about what he will be doing for summer break. Suddenly, Jason tries to steal the basketball from Dion, who wasn't expecting it. Unsuccessful Jason trips and falls. Dion taunts him and dribbles the ball between his legs and pretends to shoot a jump shot. Chris gets off his cell phone and walks up to Dion. They stand almost nose to nose, talking about how they lost the game. Marlon interrupts, guaranteeing they will win because he'll be playing on the team next year. Again Jason tries to steal the ball from Dion. This time Dion reacts and throws the ball hard at Jason, hitting him. Dion uses Chris and Marlon as shields, avoiding Jason's retaliation. While all this is happening, Chris' cell phone rings, and we see Latika just a few houses down on her cell phone, observing the teenage behavior. As Dion runs behind the parked cars, Jason is trying to hit him with the ball. Chris and Marlon walk towards Latika. The backyard view at night from the patio of Dantrell's house. Dantrell and D.U.B. are rehearsing a song they are performing at a local club later tonight. Dub takes a drag from the cigar blunt as they rap. Dantrell's cell phone rings. Dantrell steps inside the house to answer the call it's revealed that's it's his mom. They talk as Dantrell assures her that everything is fine. After talking to his mom. Dantrell returns to the patio and exchanges a few words with Dub before they head to the club. Dub improvises a freestyle as they exit the front door and get into the car. Just as they're about to drive away, Dantrell remembers to set the security alarm. Chris is at home lounging on the couch flicking through channels on the TV while on the phone with Latika. 
We see Ludica in her bedroom painting her toenails with her phone on speaker. Suddenly, the sound of muffled yelling from Ludica's parents is heard followed by a door slamming. Startled, Ludica accidentally knocks over her nail polish, spilling it all over the floor. She quickly gets up to clean the mess, turning on the radio to drown out the noise of her parents arguing. Chris is holding the phone away from his ear trying not to hear the background noise. Fatima voice is heard, yelling at Chris to get off the phone, turn off the TV, and go to bed. After cleaning up the mess, Ludica crawls into bed, switching off the lamp as the light from the radio illuminates the room. Inside a Chicago suburban nightclub, two local rappers are finishing up their performance as the rappers leave the stage, the DJ takes over and the crowd gets hyped. Meanwhile, Ten Stacks, a big dude with facial hair wearing gold chains designer urban clothes is backstage with four cronies watching the show. On the opposite side of the stage, Dantrell and Dub are waiting to perform. As Dantrell and Dub walking out to the stage, a fight break out. One of Ten Stacks' cronies punches one of the previous rappers. The bouncers and security quickly jump into action, breaking up the fight escorting the instigators out of the club. Ten Stacks makes eye contact with Dantrell as he's being escorted out. Despite the chaos, the DJ manages to calm the crowd down and Dantrell and Dub finally get to perform. Inside a Chicago high school, students are walking through the halls chatting and laughing. Chris and Ludica is seen walking together, exchanging hellos with their peers. They stop at Ludica's locker. Chris stands behind her. When she opens the locker, books and other stuff fall out. Chris teases her about the mess, but helps her pick it up. Dion and his girlfriend walk up. The girlfriend speaks to Latika, but Latika doesn't seem interested as she continues to straighten up her locker. Dion asks Chris to run to the cafeteria with him. Chris says goodbye to Latika with a kiss on the cheek. Latika is left alone with the girlfriend, who is trying to engage in a conversation. In the cafeteria Chris and Dion are in line for breakfast. Chris talks to Dion about the prom. The boys grab donuts and head to the cashier. In Dantrell's bedroom. He's laying in a king-size bed with a slight hangover. His phone rings, but he barely moves until it's rung four times. Finally, answering in a low, grungy voice. Inside a New York City hotel suite. We see Linda sitting at a desk on the phone with Dantrell. Despite being miles away, she seems to sense that something is going on. With a mixture of curiosity and concern, she questions him and Dantrell lets her know that everything is fine. Linda ends with a warm I love you. Dantrell sits up in bed, his eyes widening in shock when he sees Star lying next to him, asleep on her stomach. He shakes her to wake up. Star groggily mumbles, asking if he plans on kicking her out. Dantrell gets out the bed accidentally pulling the sheets off of Star. He walks over to his closet, wearing only his boxers. Star wraps herself in the sheet and sits up in bed, watching him. Dantrell grabs a pair of sweatpants and starts to put them on. Star gets off the bed still covered with the sheet. Dantrell is anxious to understand how she ended up in his bed, but Star seductively drops the sheet, revealing that she's only wearing a thong. She stands there, telling Dantrell how she couldn't keep her eyes off him all night and how much she loves his music. Dub enters the room. He gets excited seeing Star half-naked, he comments on her sexiness. Dantrell and Dub have a quick, hushed conversation, pounding fists, before Dub leaves the room. Dantrell and Star get back in bed. In the living room, Dub is sitting on the sofa watching music videos with the girl who came with Star. They chat before Dub gets up walks into the kitchen. He opens the refrigerator, takes a look inside, and then shuts it. The girl is standing there. Dub asks her if she knows how to cook. She replies that she's not cooking and she wonders if Dantrell has a maid or something. She's mesmerized by the size and beauty of the house, but Dub brushes off her comments. Dantrell and Star walk into the kitchen, laughing and chatting. The doorbell rings. Dantrell walks over to the door. A delivery man youthful in appearance, stands at the front door, clutching a box. 
observing the exterior of the property, he waits for a response from inside. Dantrell voice echoes out, asking for identification. The delivery man announces himself and says he has a package for Linda Washington. The door swings open, Dantrell greets the delivery man with a polite nod. The delivery man comments on the house. A compliment that Dantrell accepts with a smile. The box is handed over to Dantrell. Dantrell inquires about the need to sign for the package. The delivery man shakes his head, confirming that no signature is required. He returns to his truck, disappearing in the back for a moment before driving away. Inside the Chicago High School cafeteria, Chris and Dion are chatting while waiting in line to get food. They reach the cafeteria lady, she suggests that Dion pay for lunch since Chris paid for breakfast. As Dion takes out his wallet to pay, Chris notices Dion's girlfriend is sitting with the new boy in school and points it out to Dion. The cafeteria lady, she wishes them a happy summer break and to stay out of trouble. Dion and Chris walk to their usual table with Dion looking frustrated and embarrassed. Dion slams his tray on the table and walks over to his girlfriend who is still sitting with the new boy. After lunch, Chris and the coach's office having a conversation about how they lost the game and how they can win next year. The coach gives Chris an envelope. Chris is bewildered as he opens it. We learn that it's an invitation to North Carolina. Inside the downtown Chicago law firm. Fatima is in her offices eating a salad and checking her emails. She sighs in disappointment. She cleans up and leaves the office. She walks in the conference room, where an elderly couple is sitting at the table. Inside a suburban shopping mall. Dantrell and Dub stroll through the mall. They enter the jewelry store and the jewelry man of Middle Eastern descent approaches them. Dantrell and the jewelry man engage in conversation, leading Dantrell to hand over his chain. Dub is looking around the mall and spots two girls walking their way. He taps Dantrell and then walks over to the girls. Dantrell joins him after talking with the jewelry man. They engage in small talk and exchange phone numbers. We see ten stacks, stone and three cronies walking in the direction of Dantrell and Dub. As soon as the girls depart, ten stacks, stone and the three cronies are standing in front of Dantrell and Dub. Ten stacks wants Dantrell to tell him where he gets his beats. While Stone is checking out Dantrell's chain. Stone tries to touch, but Dantrell moves back and swipes his hand away. Stone laughs and tells Dantrell, don't forget to wear the chain to the club. They then go their separate ways. Dub and Dantrell walk into a clothing store. Stone, Ten Stack and the three cronies continue walking through the mall toward the exit. Stone asking questions about Dantrell. Inside of a Chicago mall. Chris, Dion, and Dion's little brother are waiting on food. Suddenly, Dion's little brother runs off and Dion chases after him. Chris is looking around the mall and spots Dion's girlfriend with the new boy from school. As they sit and eat, Chris tells Dion about the letter he received from North Carolina. While the little brother is making a mess. Charlotte walks up with her niece. They have a quick chat and before she leaves Charlotte tells Dion that his girlfriend is in the mall with the new boy from school. She asks Dion for his cell phone and puts her number in it. She's then walks away with her niece. Chris tells Dion to date Charlotte. But Dion isn't listening because he sees his girlfriend with the new boy and proceeds to walk that way leaving his little brother behind with Chris. Fatima is home sorting through the mail. Chris enters the house greeting her with a kiss on the cheek before heading to the fridge and surprising her with the letter from North Carolina. Fatima stops what she's doing and gets up and hugs Chris. We learn from Fatima's story that Chris's dad was killed while serving in the army. In the basement recording studio, Dantrell and Dub are busy recording music. Dub is in the vocal booth while Dantrell is standing behind the equipment. They finish up the song and have a conversation about everything. Dub's cell phone rings and they plan a date with Star and her new girl. We see Chris lounging on the couch, watching TV on the phone. He gets up to pour himself some juice when he hears knocking on the door. 
He opens the door and Dion walks in all excited about hanging out with Charlotte. The next day in the school cafeteria Chris and Dion are walking to their usual table when Dion sees Charlotte sitting alone. Instead of joining Chris at their table, Dion sits with Charlotte. Chris, Ludica, Dion and Charlotte are walking down the hallway, discussing plans to go to the movies. In Dantrell's bedroom. Star is seductively on top of Dantrell. Dub is in the guest bedroom laid back in the bed. His arms folded behind his head. He lets out a satisfying moan, expressing his pleasure, as the new girl emerges from under the sheets. Later on Dantrell and Dub are standing in the kitchen chatting while Star and the new girl sit in the dining room. We hear Star whispering about Dantrell's wealth. The new girl surveying the house with curiosity. They make their way to the door to exit the house. Dantrell turns the doorknob and the alarm sounds, causing Star and the new girl to watch intently as Dantrell tries to disable it. The phone rings. Dantrell answers it. Outside in the parking lot of the movie theater, Chris and Ludica are sitting in Chris's car. Nearby Dion and Charlotte sit in Charlotte's car and sharing a passionate kiss. Outside the nightclub. A long line of people are waiting to enter. Deb and Dantrell approach the front of the line. The guy at the door gives them the nod, allowing them to bypass the line and enter the club. Inside, the club is packed with people having a good time. Deb and Dantrell weave their way through the crowd, making their way to the DJ booth. The DJ greets them with a handshake. Dantrell hands him a CD. As the DJ and Dantrell chat, Deb surveys the scene. Outside Dantrell's house a black van is seen with no headlights on. Two individuals with masked faces are inside the van, about to rob the place. Star voice echoes in the tense atmosphere, this is the one right here. Inside the house, a red light on the alarm system blinks continuously. Dantrell forgot to set the alarm, leaving the house vulnerable to the impending danger. Inside the club Dantrell and Dub are standing at the bar, holding drinks. The DJ gives them a shout-out, then blends their music into the mix. The crowd goes wild. Dub and Dantrell move to the dance floor, where they're immediately surrounded by a swarm of girls. The sound of broken glass echoes through Dantrell's house. A beam from a flashlight illuminates the dark space. The two robbers force their way into the home, one urging the other to hurry up. Inside the nightclub Dantrell and Dub are sitting at the bar, in conversation with two guys. After exchanging handshakes, the two guys walk away. Dub scans the club searching for any sign of ten stacks and stone with their goons. Outside Dantrell's house. One of the robbers is carrying a duffel bag running to the van. He throws the bag in van and runs back into the house. In the basement, the other robber is busy dismantling the studio equipment. Outside the nightclub. Dantrell and Dub exit the club and get into the car. They make a stop at the local convenience store before heading back to Dantrell's house. In Dantrell's house. One of the robbers is in Linda's bedroom snatching up jewelry and other valuables. Outside the house. Dantrell and Dub pull into the driveway, Dub's cell phone rings. Dantrell enters the house, only to discover the robber swiftly making his way towards the basement. Dantrell chases after him. Things take a drastic turn when the robber drops everything and pulls out a gun. Dub is still in the car on the phone with the passenger door open. Two gunshots echo out. <coughs> Dub runs inside the house. The black van speeds away from the scene. In the basement, Dub discovers Dantrell's lifeless body on the ground and breaks down in tears. Inside the downtown Chicago law firm. Fatima strides off the elevator and walks by rows of cubicles before arriving at her office. She tosses her lunch and purse onto the desk. She sits down and logs onto the computer. While reading through her emails, her eyes sparkle with interest she writes something down. Later on that night. Chris is lounging on the couch, watching television. Fatima walks in. She sits down beside him and poses an unexpected question. In a Chicago suburban law office. 
Fatima is seated at the conference table with Mr. Lyndon a tall and physically fit man with facial hair wearing an expensive suit and Mr. Vincent, a short man with a shabby appearance, wearing glasses is also present. Despite the long drive, Fatima is pleased to be there and the gentlemen express their gratitude. They discuss the job opening in great detail and to her amazement, they offer her the job on the spot. Overwhelmed she accepts the job offer. Mr. Vincent then suggests they grab a bite to eat. In the kitchen in Chris's house. The four friends, Chris Dion Levica and Charlotte are gathered around the table, playing cards. Charlotte and Levica are grinning from ear to ear as they celebrate their victory. Chris gets up to grab a slice of pizza and pour some soda in his cup. Charlotte wants to play again. Chris accepts the challenge, but before they begin, Charlotte requests some music to set the mood. Inside a luxurious limousine. Fatima with Mr. Vincent and Mr. Linden sit in the back of the limousine discussing the job offer and the estate that comes with it. Mr. Vincent explains the luxurious amenities and beautiful scenery. The limousine pulls into the driveway of the once stunning home now looks abandoned and eerie. The driver opens the door for the trio as Mr. Vincent exits the vehicle with his walking stick in hand. Fatima and Mr. Linden follow. M.R. Vincent unlocks the door and opens it to reveal a haunting interior. Despite the creepiness of the house, Fatima can't help but to comment on its beauty as she ventures around. Back at the card game. The sound of music fills the room as they sit at the table. Dion's face is hidden behind the cards. As they chat about the game, Chris phone rings. A sleek limousine pulls into the driveway of the mansion. Chris steps out of the back passenger door. The chauffeur opens the door for Fatima to exit. Mr. Vincent pulls up behind them in a luxury sedan. He gets out using his walking stick and greets them. He gives Fatima the keys to the house. Fatima opens the door and leads them inside Mr. Vincent mentions that his wife would love to help decorate. The next morning. Chris is asleep on an air mattress with part of his body on the floor in Dantrell's old bedroom. Fatima wakes him up and tells him to get ready. While Chris is in the bathroom, he hears music from a car outside. He peeks out the window and sees an all-black luxury sedan with tinted windows parked on the street corner but thinks nothing of it. Later that evening, inside the mansion Mr. and Mrs. Vincent, with their son Adam. With Mr. and Mrs. Linden, have dinner with Fatima and Chris. As the adults converse, Chris and Adam are excused from the table. Fatima then learns about Dantrell being killed in the basement of the house. The next day a moving truck is seen in the driveway of the mansion. Fatima and Chris watch as the movers unload furniture and other items. Chris glances up the street and sees the same black car. The driver's side window rolls down slightly, and a trail of smoke streams out the window. The car then speeds off. Inside of Fatima's SUV. Fatima is returning from picking up her friends. Cassandra, Tracy, Jeff and Anthony. Chris is trailing behind in his car with Ludica and Dion. The view from the back patio of the mansion. Chris, Dion, and Ludica are talking when the patio door opens and the parents join them. Fatima suggests they go out to eat. Outside the back patio, the adults are seen talking. Fatima turns to her friends and shares the chilling tragedy of what happened to Dantrell inside the house. In the basement, Chris, Dion, and Ludica are talking about matters when Ludica upsets Dion and he heads upstairs. The sound of bowling balls rolling and crashing into pins is heard. Laughter echoes through the bowling alley. Tracy confidently sends the ball rolling down the lane, striking all the pins with ease. She does a happy dance. Ludica approaches the lane with the ball in hand. Before she throws the ball she glances over at Chris and Dion having a conversation. Fatima walks over to join Chris and Dion. In the dining room of the mansion. Everyone is seated at the table at the end of the meal, engaging in conversation. Fatima pours wine into her glass. Chris and Dion are in the midst of persuading Dion's parents to allow Chris to stay with them for senior year. 
Fatima becomes agitated hearing Chris talking the way he is. Her frustration reaches a boiling point and she leaves the table. Later that evening, after upsetting his mother, Chris is in his room. Sitting on the edge of his bed, lost in thought. Ludika enters the room and approaches him, whispering in his ear. He turns to look at her and they share a passionate kiss. Outside the mansion, it's a beautiful morning. We see Jeff and Anthony loading the SUV with luggage. Chris is helping Ludika with her bags. Chris's bedroom morning. It's 5.59 a.m. on the digital alarm clock. Switching to 6 a.m. The sound from the alarm clock is heard. In the kitchen. Fatima is preparing for work. Chris enters the kitchen and greets her Fatima, says a few words, and rushes out. Chris makes his way to the refrigerator and grabs a carton of juice. Taking a swig, he checks the time on his wristwatch before placing the carton back in the refrigerator and heading out the door. Outside at the school bus stop we see. Beats. A stylishly dressed Middle Eastern teenager is bopping his head and rapping along to the music blasting in his headphones. The school bus pulls up in front of him just as Chris is cutting it close, dashing across the street hopping on the bus. The driver greets them and and tells Chris if you're late, you gotta walk. Chris makes his way to the back of the bus, looking for an empty seat. The sound of the school bell is heard. The hallways is crowded with students rushing to class. Chris maneuvers his way through the crowd to reach the principal's office. He is bumped around by the flow of students. He glances back at the crowd of students. Chris stands at the front counter, soon the vice principal emerged and greets him. Inside the classroom of the new school. A male teacher is at the chalkboard, engaging with the students. The vice principal enters the room with Chris. Later that afternoon in the school's cafeteria. We see Chris sitting alone observing the students moving around. Beats and Nate walk up to Chris. Chris simply cuts his eyes at both of them without uttering a single word. Beats initiates the conversation and introduces Nate, but Chris remains silent throughout their exchange. Smoke is seen in the kitchen of the mansion. Chris is trying to cook and talk in the phone. Inside Fatima's well-decorated office. Mr. Linden and Mr. Vincent is giving Fatima a rundown on a client. Later on that evening. Chris is lounging on the couch, watching TV. Fatima enters and joins him, sparking a conversation about their recent life changes. Outside at the school bus stop morning. Chris arrives early at the bus stop. Beats approaches him with a warm greeting, but Chris remains silent. As the school bus arrives, Chris gets on first and takes a seat behind the driver. Inside the classroom teacher number one is at the blackboard explaining a complex mathematical concept. Chris is sitting at the back of the classroom, scribbling on some paper, not paying attention. The teacher turns to Chris and asks a question. Chris is fully aware of the lesson, looks up and gives the correct answer. New High School Cafeteria Afternoon The cafeteria is full with activity as students roam around. Chris sits alone at a table. After a while, he decides to go outside. He sees a group of students gathered around Beats, who's freestyling in a rap cipher. Chris stops to watch, intrigued by the rap session. Beats rhymes are on fire, and the students are cheering him on. Inside the classroom late afternoon. A female teacher is passing out test paper's results. She walks over and perches herself on the edge of the desk. Inside Fatima's office late afternoon. Fatima is diligently working at her desk when the ringing of the telephone breaks her concentration. Answering the call on speaker, Fatima engages in a conversation with her secretary. Outside of the school at the bus stop late afternoon. Chris walks to the bus stop where Beats already stands, lost in his music. Chris tries to greet him, but the bus pulls up, and Beats can't hear him. They board the bus and sit across from each other. As the bus makes stops dropping off other students. They talk for the first time. The bus stops and they get off. Beats breaks the news that Dantrell was murdered in the basement of the house. Chris gets angry and rushes into the house and calls his mom. 
After a frustrating conversation, Chris tries to go down in basement to investigate. But the door slams shut. He gets scared and runs back upstairs. Months go by and Fatima buys Chris a new car. Beats compliments the car when Chris pulls up at the bus stop. Beats gets in and they drive off. Chris pulls into the driveway. They get out the car and Chris invites Beats inside. As they walk through the house Beats comments on the changes. When they reach the basement, Beats' phone rings. It's revealed that it's his mom. Beats has to go home. Chris thinks he's scared and stands there as Beats leaves. Chris walks into the kitchen gets a glass. He opens the refrigerator and grabs the milk. As he's pouring the milk he spills it when his phone rings. We see Ludika in her bedroom. Ludika is laying on her bed flipping through a magazine, talking to Chris. Back in the kitchen. Chris is cleaning the spilled milk. When the sound of music is heard, Chris stands up, perplexed. He walks over to the window, searching for the source of the music. His attention is drawn to the basement door, which seems to be source of the mysterious tune. Chris hesitates before opening the door, the music fades away. Despite the unsettling atmosphere, Chris continues to explore. As he looks around the basement, Chris discovers a concealed space, some kind of hidden compartment within the wall. Inside, he uncovers a notebook that belongs to Dantrell, a CD, and a gun. As Chris opens the compartment, an avalanche of papers fall out, covering the floor. Despite his better judgment, Chris kneels down and gathers the scattered papers as he begins to read the handwritten notes, stumbling upon a page titled If I Should Ever Die. As Chris continues to read his behavior starts to change and a dark feeling enters the room and before he knows it, Chris finds himself rapping the lyrics out loud, acting as though he is Dantrell himself. Flashbacks of Dantrell's childhood, walking in a field with the native elderly man. The native elderly man makes hand gestures towards the sun. In Dantrell's basement, the flashbacks continue. Dantrell writing in his notebook, pacing back and forth in a trance, like he's possessed. In basement. The flashbacks end. But Chris is still possessed by Dantrell as he recites the rhymes written on the paper. Fatima enters the house unaware of what's happening in the basement. She calls out for Chris as she walks through the house. She makes her way to the basement door, hoping to find him there. However, there's no response from Chris. She continues to call out his name as she heads to the kitchen. In the kitchen, Chris is standing there, with an unusual smirk on his face, possessed by Dantrell's spirit. Fatima doesn't notice his strange behavior, but asks him if he's okay. Outside in the new high school yard afternoon. Students are seen in the schoolyard, laughing and chatting. Chris stands there watching intently as a freestyle cipher breaks out among a group of students. He can't resist the urge to join in and walks over to the circle. He sees a talented girl rapping. She effortlessly spitting rhymes. Chris steps into the middle of the circle, interrupting her flow, and begins to rap his own freestyle. The other students are captivated by his lyrics, cheering him on. When Chris finishes the students erupt giving respect, and pats on the back. Beats is watching from the sidelines, and makes eye contact with Chris as the students walk back in school. After school Chris heads out to his car, only to be approached by Beats who's frustrated and angry. Beats demands to know how Chris could have possibly known about the lyrics in that freestyle. Chris is truly confused having no recollection of rapping or the lyrics. The two boys begin to argue, but Chris decides to defuse the situation and offers Beats a ride. Despite the offer, Beats declines and storms off. Inside of the mansion, Chris's bedroom night. Chris is in bed sleep. But he's tossing and turning, lost in a vivid dream where he is on stage as Dantrell, performing with Dub. Chris suddenly wakes up his heart racing as he looks around his dimly lit bedroom in a state of confusion and fear. New school classroom afternoon. Chris has his head down on the desk, appearing to be asleep. The female teacher is using a laser pointer to highlight a location on a map. Chris starts pounding on the desk, like he's making a beat and then he begins writing furiously on a sheet of paper. 
As he mumbles the words, his head bobs along with rhythm. The school bell rings. The students quickly get up from their seats and make their way out of the classroom. Chris is halted by teacher and she talks to Chris. In the schoolyard late afternoon. We see students wandering around. Chris sees Beats and approaches him. But Beats sees him and tries to walk away. Chris catches up grabbing his arm, and they talk. Chris retrieves the paper from his pocket and hands it to Beats. Beats reads the rap lyrics written on the paper. Frustrated, he crumples the paper and tosses it at Chris before walking off. Inside the mansion night. The sound of the doorbell is heard. Fatima opens the door and Beats is standing there, he greets her with a warm smile. Fatima invites him inside. They walk to the patio where Chris is talking on the phone. Fatima tells Chris Beats is here for him. But Chris doesn't respond. He continues to talk on the phone and then hangs up. He turns to face Beats who extends his hand for a shake. But Chris ignores him. As they talk, we learn that Beat's brother is the DJ of the nightclub. Inside the nightclub. The spotlight is on Ten Stacks, who is performing on stage. Chris and Beats are standing close to the stage, near the DJ's booth. As they watch. Chris and Ten Stacks lock eyes, causing an awkward moment between them. Back in the mansion, continue. Fatima is in bed, her eyes growing heavy as she watches the television. Outside of the nightclub continue. A group of people is gathered outside the nightclub when suddenly the bouncer throws Chris out. Chris quickly gets up and walks to his car. As Ten Stacks and Stone emerged from the club, followed by a crowd. Ten Stacks yells out to Chris. Stone points at him as they approached him aggressively. Chris turns around to find Ten Stacks and Stone in his face. Ten Stacks swings at Chris, but Chris manages to dodge the punch. Ten Stacks grabs Chris and slams him to the ground. Stone instigating as Ten Stacks continues to punch Chris, who is trying to protect himself by covering up. Meanwhile, Dub is watching everything unfold. Ten Stacks kicks Chris in the stomach. Dub finally gets in between and breaks up the fight, as police sirens are heard in the background. The crowd disperses as Ten Stacks warns Chris that it's not over. As Chris slowly gets up, holding his side, him and Beats get into the car and they argue about the incident. Chris pulls off as Dub catches up to them honking his horn, signaling to Chris to pull over. Dub speeds up and gets in front of Chris and they pull into the nearby gas station. Dub walks over to Chris and they have a conversation. As Dub turns to leave, we learn that it's been Dub in the black car. Inside the mansion day. Chris is sitting on the bed. He groans in pain and gets up to go to the bathroom. He looks at his reflection in the mirror and winces at the sight of his injuries. Fatima walks in and is shocked to see him in that condition. She asks him what happened, but he denies being in a fight. Fatima doesn't believe him and walks out of the bathroom. Chris goes to his closet and takes out a shoebox. Flashbacks We see Linda dressed in an all-black hooded robe standing in front of a fireplace, tearing up papers and throwing them into the flames. She holds up a CD and tosses it into the fire. Flashbacks continue. Linda is in her office on the computer. In the basement of the mansion flashbacks continue. Linda is seen putting papers in the compartment in the wall where Chris found them. Driveway Mansion Day Chris is sitting in his car, talking on the phone. Dub's House Day Dub is in the kitchen rolling a cigar blunt when the doorbell rings. He goes to answer it and sees Chris standing outside. Chris hands him a CD and walks inside, they start talking. During the conversation, Chris goes into his pocket accidentally drops the gun. Dub picks it up and tells Chris that he will take care of ten stacks. Outside Dub's house evening, continue. Chris sits in his car, parked in front of Dub's house. He glances at his phone before checking his rearview mirror. The expression on his face was changed as he speeds off running through a red light. He drives across town and he parks in a rundown housing development. 
Chris parks nearby the black van seen at Danchel's house. Star, the new girl, and two robbers are seen standing in front of the apartment building. Chris watches them until he falls asleep in his car. Chris is wakened by two police officers in the early morning light. One officer is tapping on the driver's side window, while the other one is shining his flashlight through the passenger side. Chris is terrified and he can't explain why he was parked in the city's most dangerous neighborhood. Inside a church day. Linda, Mr. Linden, and Mr. Vincent stand together in conversation. Chris is sitting with Linda and the native elderly man. Chris, voiceover, the information I told the police got the, the two robbers arrested. Chris, voiceover, continues. Chris explains how Dantrell was finally able to rest in peace. Chicago High School Day The scoreboard displays a heart-stopping score of 70-69 with the home team trailing by one point. The crowd is on their feet, cheering wildly as the cheerleaders pump up the energy. The game horn sounds and the teams walk back onto the court for the final stretch. Chris and Dion bump fists, determined to give it their all. The opposing team throws the ball in play and the player attempts to dribble past Dion. With lightning-fast reflexes, Dion steals the ball and passes it to Chris, who dunks it in winning the game. The excited students rush on the court, cheering and hugging Chris. Through all the chaos, we hear Chris, voiceover, reflecting on the unforgettable moment. The credits roll, marking the end of an unforgettable game. I'ma, 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 I'ma put in work like a champion.